Everybody who uh, stayed late, I know it's it's dark out now, but it was it was a really beautiful, warm day in here in Madison. So that's that's perfect weather to stay indoors and watch all these movies. Oh uh, yes. I've tried working with uh, blood in the past and special effects, and I know it can really mess up shooting order and retakes. And how did you handle those mechanics? Oh, that is a great question. My special effects artist and makeup artist on Fang, Caitlin Young, she did a really phenomenal job with the blood effects. And it was fake blood, so no. Nobody's getting sued here. Nobody's getting... Uh, Surgical, unnecessary surgery. <laughs> so I guess just, yeah, we gotta, anybody, anything to do with blood or, or fur or transformations, you gotta definitely work with somebody who's a real pro and who can just, you know, just nail it. And it was all practical effects, no CGI. Yeah, yeah, very effective. Oh, thank you. It was a residential neighborhood, so I don't think so. We did, and this is something I say on the uh, commentary track too, is that we thought Dylan was going to get arrested. We were kind of worried that was going to happen, but thankfully, and I guess the presence of cameras, it's like either this is some kind of snuff film reality show or it's, it's a movie. <laughs> Did you like? Did you make some arrangements, or it was just like in the real world, but with a camera, like uh, like in a bar? It was all stage, right? Like oh yeah, you rent a, a bar, okay. And so, 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 but you didn't get a permit for for the for for the street shooting, right? Well, it was a mix of both. In the city of Chicago, it requires permits to film outdoors on a on a neighborhood street, but in Cicero, Illinois, it does not. Okay. So we filmed a lot of the outdoor scenes in Cicero because it didn't require any permits. But yeah, all of the all of the indoor locations we had to get permission, and some of the indoor locations had some pretty serious technical problems. But thankfully, we were we were able to get Fang together despite that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got a million things to say and a million questions, but um, I just want to, I mean, like, this was just firing on all cylinders. Oh, thank you. I mean, everything I could possibly praise a film for, sound design, lighting, cinematography, angles, writing, editing, um, the pacing was airtight. You, it was surreal, but grounded. Um, oh, thank makeup, you. Makeup, costuming, acting. Where did you find these actors? I, I saw that she used, like, kind of a staple of old horror and stuff. But, I mean, it was so inventive and so... I mean, these two performances of the mother and son are just like magnetic. I mean, you, it, was it a big casting process? Do you, you know, what, what was that like? Well, I was, I was originally wanting to play Billy myself, and I'm really glad I didn't go for that because I can write and I can direct, but I am not a professional actor. So in order to find uh, Dylan, I just. I went on backstage.com. I was feeling desperate one night because I knew I couldn't play Billy. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? You know, I can't, I can't do this. So I just went on backstage.com. I, I put up the audition notice for lead role and and thing. And what what really stood out to me about Dylan's audition is that he gave a very nonverbal performance in his audition. It was very quiet, and most of the Actors wanted to do the the Gregsians uh, monologue because that's the most dialogue that we have in in Fang. But Dylan mostly did the the physicality of of Billy. And I noticed this was actually something I noticed after watching Dylan's short film is that he was doing the biting his nails gesture in Fang too. So that was really cool. And and Lynn actually reached out to me directly. She. She saw a post that I made on Facebook. I just kind of mentioned offhandedly that I wanted to make a movie. And then a few hours later, I checked my messenger 
inbox and Lynn said, oh, oh, hi, Richard, I saw that you're gonna be making a movie. I was wondering if you have a role for me wow. in it. And I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm gonna start rewriting the script to make sure that it's, it has a, a really good role for her. Wasn't it originally going to be like a father and a son, but because, yes. of the, uh, because she was interested, you change it to a mother? Yes, yeah, it was originally going to be Billy's dad that had Parkinson's because that was inspired by my family as, as my dad had Parkinson's. But then once Lynn signed on, I was like, okay, sorry, dad, you're, you're dead now in this script. It's, go it's going to be a mother and son story. Yeah, she was incredible. Yeah. Oh, yep. thank you. It was Very like, good. kind of reminded me of like Ellen Burson, Requiem for a Dream, just like crazy, like full throttle. Yeah, oh, thank you. Um, I, and I have another follow-up question. Yeah, sure. there's, there's a lot of juggling of tone. There's humor, there's horror, it's a serious subject matter, but it's also, you know I mean? I, when writing it, did you feel like you were leaning into one or the other, or did you feel like, I mean, cause it all worked, but like that's tough to juggle that, you know, all those kind of tones and make it cohesive. And it, it was. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I think to me, Fang is, is mostly a, a dark comedy, or at least that's how I see it at this point. It's just that, my sense of, of humor is darker than most other people's. So it's it's funny, but it's also in very in, intense and dark at the same time.